<laughs> Hi, Melissa. Thank you so much for joining me today. How are you? Uh, I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for coming to speak to me. Just kick off by telling me a little bit about what you do and who you work for. Yeah, I work for Sumo Logic, um, and I'm the lead technical advocate here at KubeCon right now uh, in 2023. <laughs> We collect uh, logs, metrics, traces, events, all kinds of data. Uh, we have an open telemetry uh, collector and we're able to not only do that, but we also do upstream contributions to open telemetry. Sumo Logic is uh, like a premier solution for uh, observability and monitoring. Okay, that's absolutely incredible. So what's the most exciting thing that you think you guys are working on at the moment? Um, we're all doing very interesting and exciting things for upstream contributions to open telemetry. Recently, there was actually an upstream contribution for uh, PHP um, as well as like Golang. I believe uh, we've done several others in the past. As far as what I'm personally doing right now, I'm launching uh, sort of a best practices guide for uh, Kubernetes monitoring and observability. There actually is a chapter on AI ops in it, uh, so it's somewhat relevant, of course. Um, we kind of think of uh, artificial intelligence and operations, specifically within the field of IT operations, as uh, you know, monitoring and observability is sort of the bread and butter there. Not only are you sort of doing a lot of data collection and correlation, but there's also a lot of analysis to be done within uh, the product. So it's uh, it will be a very interesting best practices guides for those who are out there trying to learn a little bit more about how to do Kubernetes monitoring and observability. I think that's super useful. I'm really kind of you to create documentation like that to share with everybody. What inspired it? <laughs> well, my time at Sumo, of course. <laughs> and uh, I guess uh, I, I felt that there was also just sort of a need in the market. We, there's all kinds of ebooks and different kinds of things that are coming out, but uh, I feel that there's a big need for this influx of people that are trying to learn also a lot about open telemetry. And that's a relatively new project. Um, but I, th I thought that, you know, not only are we trying to learn not what is open telemetry, but rather, you know, how to use it and how to actually do Kubernetes monitoring and observability. And the last ebook that I think Sumo came out with was more just centered around, uh, you know, before we, there was a unification of the open census and uh, all, all these different projects to have a unified standard. I mean, it's, it's really beneficial, and especially if the last one worked, then there's space and a need for a second one, so uh, with more in-depth knowledge. So good for you, and thank you from everybody in the industry for creating something like that. So what's it work like to work with super smart people all the time, Melissa? <laughs> It's pretty awesome, actually. Uh, I, I really like working uh, at Sumo. We have a really great culture. I feel like um, I, I'm very, I'm a very analytical person. There's also a lot of other very analytical people I get to work with, very detail-oriented. Um, so I love it. <laughs> I, I love the engineers I work with. Um, I get to work on, you know, some dev advocacy, some like marketing, and I also get to kind of uh, do some creative stuff, obviously with the writing. Um, but also, I get to work with people who are not even at Sumo, so I get to also uh, talk to some of like the open telemetry maintainers and uh, some people who are doing a, a sort of upstream contributions outside of you know what we're just doing as a company. So uh, I love that everybody also cares about the community. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, it's that we were actually uh, utilizing some open source projects, such as like Fluent D. Uh, so we were at one point internally um, running, I think it was like 400 or so uh, Fluent D collectors that we were able to replace with uh, 20 like open telemetry collectors from uh, our open telemetry collectors. It's pretty cool because there's that like 20x uh, efficiency, um, but it gives you some idea, I think. <laughs> skip ahead and I'm just going to ask the one question that I've been asking everybody. When it comes to models, does size matter? Um, in theory, I suppose not. I mean, any like any analytical model, in theory, it does not. But I mean, of course, you have to like store things in uh, ideally uh, different backends and all of that. Um, but I... I suppose, I don't know, it's such a generic question. I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> Does size matter? <laughs> uh, so we're going
I guess again. not not as long as you're skilled enough with it. <laughs> Melissa, thank you so much for your time and coming to talk to me. I'm so grateful and it's been such a pleasure to meet you. Is there anything you want to add before we say goodbye? Um, I would say efficiency matters. Uh, you know, being able to run things through a single collector is very, is awesome because not only do you get to like uh, do a lot more deep in depth, you know, correlation and analysis, you get to also identify, um, you know, threat detection and you get to identify anomalies much more easily when you're looking at uh, a variety of Kubernetes clusters and nodes and pods and, uh, you know, especially on highly federated models. So it's not so much about the size of things rather than the efficiency of them.